Okay, so here are the objects you're going to need at a minimum. So you have a pumpkin, you have a cloth, and you have a kind of a trifold of a cardstock. So we are going to set this up and compose it. You'll need to put the pumpkin down onto the cloth, and then you will take your cardstock, and we're going to use that kind of trifold as a sort of cubicle because what we're going to try and do is create kind of like a room for the pumpkin. So you can use either the dark side if you prefer or you can switch to the light side. I would say whatever value your cloth you should go either lighter or darker on your background. Okay so here's what my arrangement looks like. You can see the pumpkin in its little cubicle box sitting on the fabric is to the left and then I have my easel and I'm propping the, e the canvas up with a box. You can prop yours up if you want to. You can even prop it up with your landscape painting as long as you're careful and you don't accidentally paint on it. So sometimes we need to add a little bit of height that's why I'm using a box there. For this exercise, we are painting and drawing from life. I wanted to show you that it is possible to begin a painting straight into paint. So I'm drawing essentially with paint instead of using graphite or fine charcoal. If you don't feel comfortable with this, that's okay. You can go ahead and revert back to graphite or use that little charcoal stick. You can see I'm using angular transfer here to get some of those edges because those the box itself that the pumpkin's sitting in has some straight sides and I need to make sure that my lines are correct and at the right place. You do want to think about composition. Where are you placing that pumpkin? Is it in the dead center? What about if you put it a little bit lower or to the right? So to draw with paint, I am using kind of a thinned out yellow ochre and in some places I switched to burnt sienna and you can see I'm doing it really lightly I don't like to paint with a dark value um, when I'm when I'm drawing with paint essentially that pumpkin is is kind of squatty so I was thinking of it like more like a hamburger bun rather than a pumpkin and you want to look for places where it indents like at the stem there's an indent there and I want to make sure I give myself room for the stem in fact, later on in the drawing process, I actually have to shift my pumpkin down a little bit to make room for that stem. Here I've switched to a darker value so I can differentiate the stem from the actual pumpkin itself. You are allowed to exaggerate or embellish on this, so I'm exaggerating the curve of the stem to make it more interesting. It's kind of like a hook shape or a backwards question mark. But I do want to keep in mind um, to avoid any awkward shapes. So I don't want that stem to go off the canvas in an awkward way. That is called a tangent. We'll be having a conversation about avoiding tangents in the future. Okay, here I've worked a little bit off cam camera. And you can see that I did, in fact, have to move that pumpkin down. You can kind of see it looks like double vision. I am putting in the shadows first, so I'm just um, doing a light wash of the shadow areas. There's a shadow right below the pumpkin. And I chose to put some leaves in my composition because I thought it would be more interesting and I'm trying to use the leaves to redirect the viewer's eye through the painting, so through that composition. Remember composition just means how you're arranging things within that canvas. So I'm using those leaves to kind of circle the viewer back to the um, pumpkin itself. The, the pumpkin stem, stem acts like that too. It's kind of pulling the viewer into the pumpkin. The order in which I'm operating is to do the foreground and middle ground background first. So basically painting everything but the pumpkin and the leaves. Um, this is going to help me to figure out uh, the, the value pattern. How dark do I actually go? This is with blue, but it's uh, blue is kind of a transparent color, so you're actually looking at the blue, but you can still see the yellow orange underneath, which is why it's kind of a greenish looking hue at the moment. But as you're learning, the more you layer, the more the colors start to change and you don't see through to the tone anymore. You begin to build up an opaque layer. 
So as you're doing this part, you want to look for areas that need correction, like if there's a the shape of the pumpkin needs adjusting, this is a good point to do it at. You still want to keep the values darker right at the shadow areas. There should be some shadows on here. And you want to try and see a gradient even at this stage. So I, I saw it darker in the corner and lighter as it comes towards us. So that's what I'm doing with my blue. I'm using more of a pure blue and even a dot of white and other colors in there. Okay, so now we're working on the background and I'm using the lighter side. However, I noticed that it actually looks more like gray given the lighting circumstances. Um, so when you're doing this, you want to think gradients. There's always going to be gradients. If you're doing the corner, and I'm just doing one corner, by the way, you should have one side darker than the other. So the left side on mine was darker and the light side was a little bit brighter. Think about all the varieties you can get within that white shade or gray shade. It shouldn't just be straight up gray. Remember how to make your own gray, right? It's blue, a dot of red, a little bit of yellow, and white. But you want to get some flickers of other colors. So I put pink and some lavenders and some other muted neutral colors in those grays so it wouldn't just be blah. One other thing to consider is the direction of your brush. Can you make these expressive? So even on the background, is that an opportunity that you can use interesting marks with your brush to make it more engaging to the viewer? I also want you to think about softening your edges. So like on the area where the cloth that's underneath your pumpkin meets that like cubicle room that you've built around that pumpkin itself. So just soften that, that edge either with blending two colors together or by scumbling, so dry brushing and roughing up that edge just a little bit or working wet into wet. So there's a couple of approaches. If you need help with that, just ask. Here's what my work looks like at the moment side by side with my still life setup. And you'll need to set it up this way every day. You'll also need to put your pumpkin on top of your box, hopefully it'll fit, and keep your cloth with you too. I can take back the cardstock that we're using as our background.